yeah. these houses being built in El Zonte or is this all over El Salvador? Uh, right now here in El Zonte. The project starts here. Actually, there is a, what we call El Zonte pilot. We started, it started with eight families and uh, that's, what, that's what it's going on right now uh, as we speak. Uh, but the, what we call Lomas del Zonte, El Zonte Hills, it's gonna start, you know, in, um, probably in a month. You know, that's how it, uh, we're gonna start training them next month on September, and uh, construction is gonna start on October. Wow, that's uh, this is awesome. This is really awesome. Okay, so I uh, I was gonna ask you, uh, like, hey, you know, what prompted, like, what what made you decide to make that decision to kind of, because obviously, strike sounds like it was a yeah fun, exciting time and like important work. Obviously, this kind of sounds more even more important like i is that what what i mean i'll ask you anyway because but it seems like the answer is obvious now but like what what was it that kind of prompted you uh to kind of well to make this uh this new development in your story new story get it? New story yeah. terrible joke uh what was it that prompted <laughs> you to make that? <laughs> make that well you know i started here uh, you know being part of the community helping the community you know uh supporting some educational programs you know supporting some uh, spiritual things that we do here, of course, uh, as well. And uh, so this will bring me back again to the community, you know, to be part again, like an everyday, on everyday basis. That's how, that's how it is right now. So, and of course, giving home to family is a very different feeling, you know, so it's, it's a very, that was, I forgot the word fulfillment, you know. Fulfilling, yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. I, I think like, uh, yeah, I feel like a lot of people would want to make that switch to if they can, right? Like it, it makes sense to, to do something that is obviously making you happy and helping and in, in default kind of helping other people is kind of what often makes us happy anyway. Right. So, yeah. um, that's, yeah, that's really awesome. Uh, I love it. I, I guess like, uh, so when, so when did this kind of happen? Like this, this switch to, to new story? Uh, it was a couple of months ago. It was on, uh, May, yes, it was May, May nice. this year. Yeah, because I, I knew a new story since last year, you know, because I met them here in El Sonte as well. You know, I knew about the project. I knew about the, the families and what, what was going on. And, uh, and I, and I start talking to them, you know, I, I helped them with some marketing materials because I, I had some digital marketing experience. So I, I helped them in a couple of projects. And then uh, we start talking a little bit more and then an opportunity up and so here I am. <laughs> yeah, here you are. Makes, uh, yeah, makes a lot of sense to me, man. That's for sure. Uh, Renato, I wanted to ask you, since the Bitcoin law, it's almost been a year since it's passed. Um, like, what's the state of things? How, how are the people uh, of El Salvador like looking at Bitcoin still? And then also um, has like the price impacted people's experience with Bitcoin? Like, do they see it as kind of like, oh no, because the price fell from like $70,000 almost to, to, I think we're at what, like 23,000? Yeah, well, you will have the, the two sides of the coin here, right? Because there's people that don't know about it, but they only hear, you know, the bad news, like, oh, it dropped, the prices dropped. So, you know, it's a scam, it's a scam. But you, you have the other side, the people that knows, or that knows what is it about. So uh, I will say, People here is learning still, as I mentioned before. They're still learning, and uh, and of course our our role here, as as well as you guys and myself, is to teach about this. You know, it's not it's not that I'm not saying oh, no, don't be afraid. It will go up. The price will go up. It's not only that, right? It's, it it has to be more. It, you have to to be more. Uh, I I don't have the word. Uh, you have to get more courage you know to talk about bitcoin because here is how about of course context here uh for everybody bitcoin is an asset here is a currency right so what i can do with bitcoin here i can you know get medicines i can buy i can buy medicines right away because i can receive remittances right in in, in a second you know i don't have to wait you know 24 hours or i have to pay 75 dollars to receive 200 dollars for my emergency medicines so that's another thing i can have access to new technology i'm exposed to new technology i know about financials i know how the system works so that is that's 
step by step. There's a program here called uh, My First Bitcoin. There's the, those guys are doing a great job, you know, going to schools, you know, actually training kids how to use Bitcoin, how it works. So uh, maybe right now we're not seeing on the news the impact, but we are. Uh, they are putting the seed, you know, and we're gonna see that. In a, I will say next in a couple in a couple next years. Yeah, it's um, it's gonna be big, and I think it's. Uh... I, I, I'm so glad it's happening, um, especially because for El Salvador, like, hey, you know, being honest, I never thought I'd ever visit El Salvador in my life. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's one of those things where you're growing up in the UK. I think I may have heard about it once or twice in geography, but I, I didn't I didn't know much. You know, yeah. I didn't hear anything. I, I just didn't because uh, it's, uh, it's, it's probably because it's a small country geographically. Right. And it's far away from me. Yeah um yeah there i was visiting like el salvador um and it was only the second country in all of uh all of south america last time that i'd ever ever visited uh which is pretty cool so i think uh the fact that it's bringing eyes to the country and the fact that it's bringing jobs and tourism is just awesome it's kind of been like kind of like a cheat code to do that and i think uh what you said as well about um about bitcoin like sort of remit people can get remittance and then immediately uh pay for like pharmacy prescriptions or food or whatever is 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 really important i mean even in my life right as someone because i'm moving to brazil uh next month and like for me to i keep trying to think okay right so i want to rent a place um but i can't rent a place i can't i can't get a bank account without a brazilian id but i have to get once i get there with my visa so how am i gonna <laughs> so this is like yeah. catch 22 right so how do i <laughs> okay so i can't then I'm like, okay, is there any way I can send pics, which is like the instant bank transfer without the bank account? Okay, there is this app. So I get this app. Okay, but now I've got to find a way to get my pounds into Hey Eyes. And then that's going to cost yeah. loads of money and it can take ages. I can't send that much. So yeah, like realistically, the best way is to like, use, I have Bitcoin anyway, but to turn any bank account money I had left into Bitcoin to then send it to exchange. So then send it to, it's kind of like you just realize that, hey, if everyone just, and, and a lot of friends I have who have no idea about crypto at all and Bitcoin at all, um, especially ones in Brazil, and they're like, oh, wow, yeah, see how much easier life would be for just everyone in the world if we all just use Bitcoin. I'm like, yes, exactly. it would be. <laughs> it would be, it so would be. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, everything's quick and it's just cross, like, cross borders. There's no worries whatsoever. And yeah, it just um, yeah, it's it's wonderful. So I can see how that would help people even more in El Salvador than than me, a dude who's you know. Yes. You know. Well, in now with, with new story, you can get a home. You know, where in the world you can get a home is in Bitcoin, right? And now, uh, of course, the the house, the social housing, is it goes beyond that. That giving just a roof. Here in El Salvador, we have six months of rain. Very hard. It, it's been raining pretty hard. So now that I'm into this field of social housing, social housing, I understand more like for our country, El Salvador is you know, a third world country, uh, families that don't have access to a bank system so they can not get a, a, a decent home. They have to be worried all the time about their belongings when it rains or for safety. So kids are, are in, you know, focus on their studies. So if, if, we, if you're not focused, on your studies, you're not focused on dreams. You're not. You don't have hope. You're just surviving here. If you don't have an adequate home, so that's the that's what new story brings. Actually, it is a new story for those families. You know, it will bring you know uh, uh, hopes, dreams, um, uh, and and the other one is I forgot. Uh, like when you want to achieve new stuff, right? When you when you feel that you can do it, right? Like um. Okay, like belief or like goals or something. I'm trying to think of the right word for this, but yeah, um, yes. passion, I guess, or yeah, gives you. I guess it gives people strength, right? To think, oh shit, okay, like I can actually. Like, this is an option for me. Um, yeah, because when you when you when you don't have an adequate adequate home here, at least in Osaba, a lot a lot of cities, you know, you you have dirt as as a floor. As floor. You don't have a, a like a, a solid concrete floor. You have dirt, so you will have a, a lot of diseases, right? You know. Uh, stomach or breathing or whatever you know so you have to deal with those things instead of as probably we all when we were born we didn't have those issues right what was our purpose i mean what was our opportunity opportunity was like yeah i can go to school you know i can get i, I can get to get my toys but people here don't so now with a with a with a better home you have a better life 
how are you guys choosing which families will be um, assisted like with with the house? Uh, we work together with a part with a local partner and the government here. So they they run a uh, a program. They run like um, how do you say this? Uh, you have to fill a form, right? So like an application. So application. Application, yeah. You you go through a process on of an application. So if you you, I mean, almost everybody do it. So you can you pass it that you can pay, you know, for this home. Um, there are people that pays, you know, 150 for a room that is not even concrete room. So, you know, like, uh, so if you pay $60 for a house, it's so different, right? So that's, yeah. Uh, so answering your question, you have to pass, you have to go through a filter. And what's the demand been like? Have you guys just had like an overwhelming demand from families uh, submitting these applications? Yes, that's a lot of families, you know, request the need, the need of a home, right? So they are, uh, we had, for, as I mentioned before, 400 families for this project, but New Story already had built more than 10 communities here. It's almost 10,000, I mean, 1,000 homes, you know, built here in El Salvador. Wow. Okay. So there's quite a few made already. I mean, um, I, in fact, actually I'll, I'll ask right now before I mean, I'll ask again at the end, but how can someone donate to, to new story either in fiat or, or Bitcoin? Yeah, they can go to our website, newstorycharity.org slash donate, and you can find a way that you can donate. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So newstory.org slash donate. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Because I want to ask now, obviously, in case anyone's listening to this bit and then they, you know, so that'll, uh, that'll make sure they know how to, to donate and obviously help more, more families in El Salvador get um, competent housing. Because as you say, it's one of those things you take for granted is even just as a child. Yeah. Like I can get water to drink easily and like go to school and learn and play with my friends or whatever. But obviously, as you say, if, if you're, you know, I'm having illnesses from, from having enough inadequate housing or yeah protecting your possessions and yourself yeah. um you don't really have time to worry about anything else essentially um so it makes a huge difference to young people's lives as well as uh, adults too um yeah that's crazy well yeah i can definitely see why you've made your move uh, to new story that's for sure um is it something that um yeah something i'm i'm kind of interested in it's a bit of a topic switch but i just kind of thought of this i was thinking hey you're someone who has been involved with Bitcoin now for yeah, like three years or so since the the project uh, Bitcoin Beach project became from from the community project that it was. Um, what's uh, what's kind of the strangest uh, or like weirdest kind of story you've got like around? I was just thinking of this. I know it's a complete switch of topic, but I was just kind of thinking to lighten <laughs> the mood here. Um, like you must have. I was thinking, okay, you must have seen because there's obviously like people who've come to visit and. Like you had Jack visiting and Strike, and so there's a lot of stuff you've like been through in the Bitcoin world. And I know that Bitcoiners and generally crypto people are usually pretty uh, wacky and passionate. So I was just interested to see like what's the craziest story you could think of um, that's happened to around you or to you or, or something like that that you've heard of. Oh well, I, well maybe the cra there was a crazy guy. I'm not gonna say his name, of course. But uh, he came as a YouTuber, right? Like a crypto YouTuber. I have a crypto YouTube channel, and I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna, you know, create content for you guys. I'm gonna, I wanna help you guys, you know, uh, you Bitcoin Beach team, right? So I was just listening, you know, and when he started to, he brought his camera, and we were waiting for a crew, you know. Sometimes these guys have one or two people, you know, as a crew. So, uh, so we we said, I mean, the team here said, okay, let's do it. I was just you know curious and I, I want to follow this guy and see what what is this about so it's a you know a long hair blonde guy uh, and then and, and and he was like okay let's go let's go outside let's go let's go walk the community let's go walk here and uh and i i, I want to go to jail what do you mean you want to go to jail <laughs> like he wants he wanted to go with his camera to jail and film the the guys in jail you know how a salvador jail looks like for a Bitcoin content, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "What?" Oh yeah, but and at the end of the day, it was just him by himself, you know, with uh, probably seventy-five followers on his YouTube channel at that time. So <laughs> it was like, 
yeah, let's do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> did he? Like, oh, oh my god, you're probably like, no, you don't want to go to jail, mate. Trust me. Did he? Did he? Yeah. Did, did he go to jail? Did he succeed or no? No, no, he didn't. He didn't because nobody wanted wanted to to take him, you know, to that place, right? Maybe a taxi driver took him, but no one here wanted to drive him there. I mean, he, you know, he was old, sweaty, you know, like that. His shirt was, you know, straight to his chest, and like, let's go, let's go. I, I want to get the content. I want to get the content because the craziest, you know, he has he had this quote like, the craziest content will call the craziest movement sort of you know that was his motto kind of thing you know i love the it passion was, i guess but, yeah, uh, yeah the passion was so good but it was crazy <laughs> yeah yeah uh, <laughs>